What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com continuing our series on learning SketchUp in 30 days by learning how to create a construction animation in SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so we talked about this a little bit in a previous video, but I wanna get a little bit more in depth with it. Remember, the thing that we talked about previously is we talked about using section planes inside of SketchUp in order to create a moving animation. So the way that we do that is we add one section plane, and then a second section plane. So I'm using the move tool in copy mode right here. All right, and so if you remember, if you create two different scenes, so if we go over into our scene section right here and create a scene with this as your active section plane, and then you create another scene with this as your active section plane, SketchUp is going to animate the transition between those two scenes. And I forgot to update that scene when I made this our active cut right here. So we're going to update all of our properties. Now we've got scene one and we've got scene two. Now the problem is we need to have multiple different phases in here of things that are being animated, right? But you can only have one active section plane at a time unless you have them inside of groups. So what we want to do is we want to start by taking our floor framing like this and the section plane and putting them all in a group. And so once we do that, now we can have multiple different section planes going at the same time. So let's say, for example, that I had a layer of plywood on top of this, like this. We'll push pull this up to like three quarters of an inch, something like that. And then I'm gonna triple click on it. I'm gonna make that a group. Well, now I can double click inside of that group and I can add two section planes for that layer of plywood, like this. And so now, I can have a scene where that first layer of plywood or where that layer of plywood is off. So I can create a new scene. And then I can go inside that group, right click and make a scene where this layer of plywood is on like this. For scene two, we wanna make sure that that's active. For scene three, we wanna make sure this one is active right here. Now, one thing that we do wanna do though is in our first scene, we want to make sure that our plywood is hidden, right? Because notice how this is animating our plywood in the first scene. What we want to do is we want to right click and we want to hide this, and then we want to update that first scene. And then for our second scene, notice how the plywood is animating backwards. Well, what we want is in our second scene, we also want this hidden, right? So we're going to hide this, and then we're going to update it. So now in the first scene, the plywood is hidden so you don't see this animation. In the second scene, the plywood is hidden so you don't see this animation, but that section plane is active even though the object is hidden. And then in scene three, it's unhidden. And so it's gonna animate the transition from here to here. And I highly recommend that when you start doing this, that you practice a little bit by doing something simple like this. So before we work on multiple different phases and other things like that, what I really want you to do is just focus on something simple like this. And the other thing we might do is before scene one, we might create a scene where our floor is hidden as well. So then we start with nothing. And then we go into scene one. And then we go into scene two. Otherwise, what it's going to do is it's going to animate that section cut back in the very beginning of your scene before the whole thing starts. But now let's go ahead and let's add some stud framing. And I'm gonna do this pretty quick. Uh, we've talked about how to do this in this series before. So I'm just gonna speed this up. All right, so now we've got our studs in here and we wanna create an animation that shows those studs. So I'm gonna select this whole thing like this. Um, I'm gonna make sure I don't have the plywood floor selected. I'm gonna make this a group. And again, remember, we're just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and toggle section planes on. So for inside of this group, we wanna add a pair of section planes. Again, so we're gonna add a section plane right here and make sure that we move it so that it's outside of this object. And then we're gonna make a copy across here like this with this section plane. So now we've got two section planes that we can animate for our framing being created. So to start off, we want to make sure that this is set as the active cut over here. 
and I'm going to double click inside of scene three. I'm going to make sure that I'm in scene three before I do this, but I'm going to take scene three and I'm going to zoom my camera out a little bit. I'm going to make sure that this cut is active like this. And remember in scene three, if we don't hide this group, then it's going to basically animate the transition of the object moving backwards like this. So we want to start with this hidden right here. Then we're going to update scene three. Then we're going to add a new scene, which is going to be scene five because I added a scene four in here. But scene five, we're going to unhide that object and we're going to set it so that this section cut is active like this. And then we're gonna update scene five. So now we've got a scene three right here. And then we've got a scene five where this is animating our framing. But remember, we are gonna have to go back through in scene one and update as this object is hidden. And in scene two where the object is hidden like this. But now this is working the way that we want. And then we're just gonna come back in here and we're just gonna add our trusses. And in this case, I'm just gonna use a truss that I downloaded from the 3D warehouse because I just don't feel like modeling out the trusses manually. So I'm just gonna explode this, get rid of the extras. Whoops. And we'll just set this one truss right here. And I'm just gonna scale it in. I'm not too worried about this being like super scaled properly because this is more of an animation tutorial. So yes, I'm sure someone will tell me this isn't how you build a shed and you'd be correct. I'm just going to align this at the midpoint if I can find it. There we go. Like this. And then we'll take these trusses and I'm not sure what spacing on a truss is. So we're just going to do 24 inches. And then we'll just do the same thing with those trusses where we put them in a group. I click on scene five so that I can get the camera view. And then within that group, I'm just gonna add that same pair of section cuts like this. So I'm gonna set this to the active cut. I'm gonna hide this group and I'm gonna update scene five, then I'm going to add a new scene with scene six, and I'm going to unhide the group. And I'm going to make this our active cut right here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to update this. And so one thing I want to do is I want to go into this style. And in the modeling settings, I also want to toggle section planes off so that we're not seeing those section planes. And I think all of these had the same style applied to them. So that shouldn't be a problem. But then we also have to go back in and update these with the proper things hidden. So in this one, for example, in the first scene, I want to make sure that everything is hidden. And then we're going to update this scene. Scene two. Same thing, I wanna make sure those are hidden, so I'm just gonna right click on them and click hide. And we're just gonna go through and we're gonna do that for all of these different scenes. All right, and so real quick, I'm gonna to toggle my section planes on and I wanna make sure in scene three that this section plane is active in addition to these objects being hidden so that I get the animation of my framing in here. Then we're gonna get the same thing with our trusses. And then from there, you can keep going and add things like cladding and other things like this. But we're gonna go ahead and call this good for this video. All right, so if you have any questions about anything we talked about, leave them in the comments down below. So for this one, once you get the sequencing figured out, it's pretty easy, but there is a little bit of trial and error when you first get started. So don't get discouraged, just keep practicing with it until you get it. I will link to the next video in this series as soon as it's ready to go. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.